should do a starter too. Maybe. Or figure out the common issue of the grounding out or whatever it is. Very nice, very nice. My boy is crazy sauce. Absolute mental. He actually doesn't even need a lawnmower. He just drives and uh, does lines like OG Santos in the in the grass. Just drives his car and it cuts it. And welcome back to the channel. Today, the Q45 is going to get some love. So, you want to tell the people what all we got uh, starting today? A bunch of stuff for a good daily driver. Good uh, daily driver. Yeah, we raised subframe, transmission, maybe raise the engine on top of the subframe, but see how it looks after just the subframe and determine that. And if I still have good motor mounts, maybe I'll leave it alone, but it's almost 200,000 miles, so it's probably about due for a lot of uh, bushings and stuff, but. The kid's smacking too many reflectors. It's scary. Wait scary. To smack a pan out from with that being said, if your cars are low, do the maintenance and necessary modifications to be able to drive low safely. We'll show you guys what suspension and stuff. Um, if you don't know already for this car, it is all S chassis suspension. So we'll go over that later, but the car is like, I think what, negative 12 and negative eight or something like that. 12 and 10, drives it all the time, but hitting a couple things in the ground consistently and so why not raise the stuff that we can raise i would say without a, too much work but it's going to be a good amount of work so let's get it in the air let's check it out and we'll go over everything that we are doing today bro peep this grasshopper likes the green bro whoa <laughs> nelly yeah before we get it too high we'll show you guys what it looks like at I guess ground level because you usually can't see this you know where you bent over and there's shadows and stuff but frame is quite low um, pan is just on the other side of that <laughs> obviously you can see that Sir Charles was picking up some grass uh, once we lock it in we'll go under underneath and show you guys but frame always hangs low compared to like the pinch welds and the rockers so that's definitely the first thing he's hitting um, on top of Front subframe, rack, all that jazz is still up there. Um, shortening the subframe raises it up, eases stress on steering rack and some other arms and stuff as well. So figured I'd just show you guys how low the car is and I'd say maybe like, maybe an inch or so off the ground. Pretty solid. Some light. Yo, you know you're missing your half your exhaust, right? No. That's why it sounds like it's chopping, but it's, it's it's crazy. I just showed you guys from that angle, but if you actually look from this angle, it's literally one finger length off. So I'd say it's a good bit smaller than it looks from the other side, just because how far back it is. But yeah, check that out. Rear subframe doesn't really look like it's hit. Diffs are quite high, I'd say, on these cars, on these subframes compared to LSs, where the frame rail is. Typical LS is gonna be like a couple inches lower. Wherever the barrels and stuff sit is usually where where they sit, but I thought this was a fork. Or a spoon. Yeah, we keep them on deck. Yeah. But clean though. I mean Transpan just has a couple scrapes. I'm sure that's from going over like restaurant entrances. Skid plates putting in some work. Skid plate is Plate. Bro, that's that's thick too. Good on you. It, it's been working. I oh, think yeah. we'll take it off probably. Don't mind that. That's we're, we're fixing that too. Power steering leak. We'll hop on that. Maybe starter, but probably, really uh, a little bit of rack. A little bit of rack. Okay. Yum. Not bad though. It's actually really clean. Once Charles lets me know what uh, we're gonna start on first, we're gonna go crazy, go stupid. Oh wait, tell the people what suspension this is. S14? S13. S13? It's a S13 knuckle with the S14 
tie rod end so it actually threads onto the Q45 OEM tie rods. And S13 lowers? Yeah, S13 lower, just uh, stock, not extended or anything, bolt straight on, no issues. Megan adjustable traction arm. Yep. And um, everything is OEM as far as calipers, rotors, and I just used a S13 five lug conversion hub, which is not that expensive if you find them. So everything is completely refreshed up front as far as <laughs> outers. Well, yeah. And then, which means you have to run what S13 coilovers, right? Yeah, S13, S13 coilovers with Q45 top hats. Sick. And update time. So, being that this is a four-post lift, uh, we use these smart little Johns on the front of the on the front of the car. Basically, lowered it onto those so that the front could come up. Um, we're just kind of checking out what we're gonna do. Um, as you guys can see, like this back mount is obviously lower than the front one, and it comes up all the way across and then bolts up right here so however much that we take off the top we have to make sure we take off the bottom so that everything can go up um, this little lip and stuff looks like it might be a bit of an issue but we can either notch some of the subframe or cut that lip off and then when we cut this we'll see when we take the subframe off but right now we are just uh kind of getting the game plan as well as taking all of this part we'll just hang the caliper loosen up the lower and the traction arm and then uh, take off the top hat coilover mounts and the whole assembly will come out, so. It's tight? No. No? No. Remember to tighten your bolts, kids. Tighten your bolts, kids. Yeah. It's my fingers. You should have used max speeding rod, red uh, Yellow Loctite. Loctite. Yellow, Yellow Loctite. <laughs> Yellow Loctite. And update time, so. I know you guys can't really see it, but that is a crossbar that goes from strut tower to strut tower. The giant bar has a, like, just connects both sides, and then usually hooks up with two chains, and you can adjust it from the top. We ended up having to use a ratchet strap, um, and that is because we could not find anything about a second engine mount. We could only find, or not engine mount, but engine, like, hoist area, so we just decided that's the best bet. Coming down underneath, we are starting by taking off the steering rack. Um, it's just a bracket that goes up and down on both sides. There's access holes here on the bottom. And then uh, there is a couple nut and bolts that connect brackets to the subframe. There's four main subframe bolts, one, two in the rear, and then two up front. And then uh, really the only other thing is gonna be the actual motor mounts, which also have access holes underneath there so i'll let you know what size and stuff those are but for the most part um to take the subframe off just disconnect everything that it touches so four main bolts steering rack couple sensors and plugs and as you guys see we did take off the whole suspension all we did was lower control arm bolt um, the tension arm hooks onto this, so we took that off as well. Uh, disconnected the caliper and hung it up, and then the three bolts that go on the top of the top hat. Make it easy, get everything out of the way. And it'll also be easier for figuring out like if anything's hitting or touching when we start shortening that, which we're gonna do tomorrow. Um, we ran to Harbor Freight and got that, kinda wasted. Nah, not wasted, but time's kinda been flying. We've just been figuring out what the best bet to do, uh, I'm just gonna get it pretty much apart and then ready to cut for tomorrow. I got nothing for you. You got nothing for you. It's not gonna clear. What? The subframe's not <laughs> clear. What do you mean subframe? We have, we have to take this off. Why? Uh, subframe? Back. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Well, never mind. You're not just taking off a bracket. We're gonna take off the whole steering rack. <laughs> At um, least you can clean it up, though. See if there's any leaks. Type yeah, anything up. Right, it looks like my entire car is a leak. Sheesh. The kid's roasting himself. If we don't get this done today by noon o'clock, one o'clock. It's all Charles' fault. I said I'd be here ready at 9. I even picked up that special pack. That special K-pack for later. 
And that boy ain't even outside. Come on, Charles. Step up your game, baby. Now I just gotta sit here and enjoy this AC. Wasting time, valuable time, that we could be getting this Bipu Q45 together. How's it feel being a, a G kid? Bro, how does it feel making me wait on you? It was like six minutes. <laughs> Christ. Is that your poster? Yeah, no, it's my calendar. Oh. Hooters. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Yeah. How do you think I'm always on time? Boys, because I'd be staring at my calendar making sure I'm on time. Boys. Yo. New exhaust tip. Yes. Bro, that's my cold Is this air for the spark plug so it shoots flames? Yeah, that's, bro, come on. That's my cold air intake, bro. Only fast guys know what I'm talking about. It is pretty cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's freezing in here, bro. It's like, it's, it really is. It actually really is pretty cold. All right, let's get started. Today is a uh, time or the day that we cut the subframe. Our thought process on this is cutting the mounts basically flush with the metal sleeves. Um, also the reason we think that this is going to be the best with the least amount of work is because if you were to get rid of these mounts and get solid mounts, solid mounts mount up from the bottom, they go in, and they stop at the top of the sleeve, which is just about there, right before the, um, you know, rubber and all that stuff. So, we're going to try and make everything even, of course, as much as we cut off here, we're going to cut through there, um, but in theory, if we cut a quarter inch, half inch off of this, do the same there, whole subframe mounts up, um, you know, that much higher, raising the engine and trans. And then over the last like day or so, um, Charles has been cleaning up everything underneath. So we've got, you know, everything clean to work with. Actually it looks really good. Put new power steering pump. That's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, got rid of a lot of the leakage and stuff. So that's gonna make it very nice. And then the reason we haven't been in a rush is because we're waiting for a steering rack. And that comes in in a couple days. So today we're just going to shorten the subframe, make sure everything mounts up, see if there's anything that we're going to have to clearance um, when it comes to the frame rails or even just notching some of the subframe. But uh, yeah, I think that's the gist. So let's get to it. <laughs> OSHA approved, bro. Yeah. Saved his foot, bro. Absolutely. Bro, what the? <laughs> I literally just walked behind to go get my coffee, bro. I'm walking like this. I freaking throw something away. And all I hear is... I look back and like... It's crazy, man. That's where you wear goggles. That's where you wear safety glasses. All you idiots out there that don't be wearing these... <laughs> No. <laughs> For real, bro. These things blow up. I've had so many of these blow up, cutting yeah. like my LS floors and stuff. Battle scars. Battle scars. That's from before. Yeah. Careful, guys. Be careful. But that one's almost all the way through. Yeah, just to show you guys what we're doing. That's the last bit. It's basically just this right here that has to be cut the rest of the way. 
and then we'll grind them down and if we got to plate them or do whatever else we'll we're just playing it by ear so once we kind of get all these cut we'll make sure they're matched up um we'll see if we have to bang anything out or clearance and and go from there so let us get to this and i guess we'll just catch you guys up when we're done after a couple blown up blades actually well just one blown up blade we are well charles finished up with this first one i am the spectator and filmer today and uh sidekick i'm just helping out but boom bada bing bada boom baby not too bad of a cut i think at first the idea was to lean it up sideways so that you could cut straight down it one so that we can get the um cutoff wheel you know as straight as possible but there's going to be some parts that we can't get to so the idea was also to have it straight up and down so you could sawzall it down um and like i explained before just right under this bevel right here as high up as my fingernail can go before it starts to taper out and come up um that's just where we're cutting off i'd say it's a solid it's gonna be a solid half inch yeah if not if not i mean even a little bit more yeah, so if you look straight down there you go compared to that damn that's actually a really big difference yeah once that the, <laughs> what's this cut off piece, and everything yeah the outer piece comes off and you just see the center point where the bolt goes through and it's should be solid i have a feeling that we're gonna have to do a little bit of hitting and cutting either on the subframe or on the frame up there but shouldn't be too too bad if we if it comes down to it and there's something like you know that's that close before letting us get all the way up we can always add a small little spacer we were thinking about putting like like a big washer big enough hole in the middle so that the bolt can come through and then just like tacking it all the way around just to have an even mate, mating surface but being that you also have this entire bushing the whole middle dowel that the bolt goes through and the whole outer side is already welded technically wouldn't need to do that but that's just i guess if we have to add any spacers or I don't anything think we'll have any issues with the side uh if anything it would be this that probably hits anything but i don't think it's going to be raised up that much because it looks like it'll just barely slide inside the thin walls that are around slide in up. the walls in the walls slide like inner walls Bada bing, bada boom. So all of these are ground down, uh, pretty much level as can be. Measured both sides, pretty much tried to match them up um, so that when they go up, it's super even. If it's off by a millimeter or so, really not the biggest difference. If we have to make a plate or something, then uh, we can always make a little spacer or washer to go in between the subframe and the frame. But. We did measure it and it came out to what? Like three quarters of an yeah, inch? Yeah, right around three quarters. That's a good amount. More than I need probably. Yeah, I mean, but still, I mean, more the merrier without having other issues. Cause once you get to a certain point, raising subframe and stuff, uh, angle on the steering rack is gonna have issues. The steering column stuff, um, you know, then you gotta get a pinion angle or, and uh, you know, a bunch of other jazz, but this should be more than enough. Um, kind of in that neutral zone. So I think it's about time. Like I showed you guys earlier, got everything pretty much cleaned up. So I'm gonna put the camera down. We'll test fit this up, put those nuts on. And um, for you guys that are wondering, I think I said it before, we used ratchet straps around the bottom of the engine. Um, when you tighten one ratchet strap, of course it pulls one side. So we did two, uh, one with the ratcheting side here, one with the ratcheting side there, just to hold it up. And then while we're not underneath it, We've got this uh, 
engine transmission stand. So we'll take that down, straps will hold it, we'll put the subframe up. This is just a precaution. Um, and I think I showed you guys before, we just got that harness bar. So it's been putting in work, straps are tight and precautionary measure. So let's get this up. And a couple minutes later, subframe is in. The only downside that we found is that right here um, in the middle of the screen, it is touching. So when we pull the subframe off, we're just gonna bang that out. Um, it's nothing crazy, nothing structural. We're not cutting nothing. Just gonna bend that a little bit out the way, but it fits really, really nice all the way and basically mounts up. On all other three, this is just the only one that is hitting. I'll show you guys the other side. But even just looking at the subframe in general, like the subframe now is, it's higher than the frame rails, which is one, the goal, and two, raises the pans like crazy. So here we are. Oh, this side kind of has to come up too. I think we got to bang just a little bit around there. Just because I see uh, some space yeah, and maybe. stuff. It's really close. But it fits well. I'm hype, I'm excited. You excited, Sir Charles? I'm just glad my pans are gonna be safe. But intact. That's gonna suck about putting these new motor mounts in is um, they're single bolt, so they're not nut and bolt. They're not, sorry, not nut and bolt, but not nut and stud. So you can't just slide it in and then tighten it. So like when I took them out, Obviously the subframe is disconnected from the motor mounts already because it's just two nuts in the bottom. The new ones are one nut that goes all the way through. And so you just have to hold it at the top and tighten it from the bottom? Uh, yeah, but it's a little bit difficult to get from the top. And it, we might have to tighten it from the top, I'm not sure. Because I don't think there's enough space to drop in that lug of the bolt between the header heat shields and everything up there because there's not that much space. And for those asking, we are replacing the engine mounts and making a new transmission mount. Um, these are actually S14, right? Yep. S14, ISR, poly. poly, and metal outers. So it's a poly bushing on the inside and then stackable outers so that you can make the mount smaller or thinner. And uh, it's an Allen on the bottom and a nut on the top. So we'll probably end up putting it in like this using a stubby on the top and then just something on the bottom to damn I almost farted I was gonna shit myself if I did though I'm holding it in but yeah so we we figured this out um, we just tested it out subframe fits engine mounts are gonna be going in I think we are actually gonna have to take off one of these because it one is on each side yeah one on each oh oh to where it's one mount one yep yeah all right well we're taking off two because that's how high the engine is I mean we can see how, if yeah, it's hitting the we hood. We might be able to get away with just taking off one, but as of right now, as it's sitting with it, how far it's pulled up, it sits a little bit above the subframe, but it's still, um, really to get close. that to actually slide in there, you have to take off one, of each, one on each side. So we will do that. We are gonna get a longer bolt though, probably an inch and a half longer bolt, because uh, the way that we used this bolt, um, it, it the threads just barely went into the top so we we at least need another inch for some good threads might get an inch and a half because we can always shorten it but this is what goes on the transmission in between the like mount that sticks in the bottom then it goes this piece then it goes transmission so upon further investigation we decided we are not going to make a custom trans mount because even though the trans mount is thick we could always get rid of some of these studs. Um, well, not ri get rid of them, but shorten them up some. But look how much higher the trans mount sits than the transmission pan anyways. It's already above the frame rails and it's further back past the pan. So if anything here is getting hidden, I hate to say it, but pan is also gonna get hit. So we decided we're just gonna leave that. If we gotta shave some of these bolts down, we will, or the street will do it for us. Um, <laughs> But the subframe is all the way up and in. We clearance just a little bit, didn't have to cut anything. Just hit a little bang action. Um, and yeah, they're all the way up. So it moved it up so much. Like like I said, what, three, three quarters it was? Yeah, almost a full inch. So banged this out. 
just a little bit. We can always hit it back in if we want, make it look a little bit nice. But, um, but yeah, the whole subframe goes up. Engine sits nice. We went up top to see, you know, clearance levels and stuff. It's like really close. But once we put the mount on, the engine's gonna drop just a little bit just to uh, and come down on it. We still don't have the transmission at the height that it needs to go at. So it'll probably tweak the motor a little bit more. It might bring the front of it down a hair and back up a little bit just because it's gonna pivot a hair off of picking this up because this is going to go up. I mean, yeah, good half inch, three quarters of an inch also probably just to where this is already close to hitting floor, so I might have some hot feet. But pretty snug. Very nice, very nice. And then uh, also forgot to mention, I guess I'll. Which is easier to show. So we did use dowels underneath. You guys can see that it goes threads, it goes nut. Well, the threads only go so high up before it just kind of tapers out, gets a little bit thicker, and it's smooth. Um, so we tried putting the subframe up and just tightening these bolts all the way up, but it obviously couldn't tighten all the way. So we got some dowels or whatever you want to call these, like spacers, with a wider hole on the inside, same diameter of the nut, and it allowed us to, you know, put them right there, tighten the nut all the way up, put the subframe all the way up and act as a spacer. And on the uh, rear, right now we have no washer on here because the stock ones had this little plate just so it pushed more on. This this attached, thing. this attached like this. Other way, flip it. No. Yeah. How? Because well, it will got squash. Oh, oh, I thought you meant like this. The fronts have that on. But yeah, either way, so this, this mounted up like this, obviously it's not gonna be able to, so maybe just cut that circle out and use it, or just take it off, not use it. The thing is that the dowel goes, the, there's the silver dowel that goes all the way through the entire mount. That is metal. So no matter what, metal is gonna be touching up on the frame, not gonna be the biggest deal. And the rubber mount, so they're supposed to move a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure that this just maybe adds a little bit of stability. Who knows how much it really did, because honestly, what does this thin plate do going from here to here? I doubt it moves that much. The front still has it on it. It's already so close clearances up here, it can't move that much anyways. You know what all the stock guys, OG heads are gonna say? Those are so important. It's there for a reason. It was there for a reason. You know what? So is the frame, but it's gonna be eaten by the road, so I don't see a point, <laughs> you know? Touche, touche. And with a quick little cleanup, subframe is back out. We pulled it um, just because he is going to prep it and go with paint. But while we wait for the power steering rack, as well as having to gather some longer bolts for the engine mounts, as well as probably just going to get a stock OEM mount for the transmission. And then when we raise the transmission up, we'll just make a plate on the bottom, basically just to act as a spacer. Trying to dumb it down, make it a bit easier. But uh, I think we're gonna call the video here. Over the last couple days, we've made some good amount of progress. I think if you guys watching this are gonna do the same thing, if you watch this video and the next video when we finally have the subframe done, painted, and inside with everything, in case we run into any issues, I think you guys could definitely do this in a day. Start in the morning, have a buddy come help you, tear stuff apart, clean stuff up, chop it, boom, put it back in really not that hard we just come after work and work on it a little bit wait for parts work on it a little bit so i think that's kind of why it's taken a couple days as well as us just kind of taking our time because not to mention it's it's also been nasty it's been literally the past what week it's been record heat yeah record heat i think at like 9 a.m i mean 9 p.m it's still like 87 percent humidity or something which is insane somebody was saying that's basically like being at 2500 altitude or something like at the same heat i don't know it's it's been crazy i mean you guys can see it looks like i'm crying because it's so much sweating but we will be making another video on notching the frame up here and boxing it in making some more clearance and stuff because we went lower with the subframe actually raised the subframe um so we'll have a little bit more room to get lower and still be weary of space. I don't even know what I'm saying from there. But have less space. Less space. 
less space. We're making more space so we can go lower to have the same amount of space, but being lower. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you guys uh, got some great knowledge out of this. Stay tuned for the next one because it is Saturday. Wednesday, the power steering rack should come in. Charles doesn't think it does because FedEx, FedEx always screws them over. Um, but yeah, by the time you guys see this video, probably be midweek, we'll get the parts and then I'll throw this video back up. So in the next week or so, you guys should have both videos. Hopefully be able to do this at your house by yourself. If it was at my house, it'd just be in the driveway. street or the driveway. Yeah, and you guys could do it as well. This kind of just helped us out a little bit, but yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. Stay tuned for the next one. Hit the links down below. Check out some merch. Wait for the next merch drop. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Later.